All right. Go. So good afternoon, uh, good evening. We're here in the lovely city, the Emerald City of Seattle. My name is Carl Weaver. I'm a Greater China and India wireless market mobile device specialist. I've been here over 20 years, helping technology companies sell to the Far East, supply global supply chain manufacturing ecosystem, mobile device space, OEMs and ODMs. I work for a company called Oasis Smart Sim. Oasis Smart Sim is a French invested Singapore manufacturer of smart card technologies, now jumping into a new technology called eSIM. Yes, eSIM is very, very new, and I'm pretty sure most of you have never heard of it. The, the term eSIM comes from Apple. The term EUICC is what the techie, geeky engineering crowd knows, or the smart, uh, smart card community knows, EUICC. What it is basically is embedded it's going to be embedded into everything. You talked about those smart, um, those smart lights. They're going to embed 3G and 4G connectivity. And eSIM provides the capability to have YWAN, wireless wide area network connectivity in mobile devices. That's what it does. That's what it provides. But you have to get there via wireless technologies from the smart device to the internet wirelessly either 3G or 4G. I think I need somebody. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I was gonna. Okay, so the company's called Oasis Smart Sim. My present, presentation is called, is called The Rise of eSIM for Smart and Connected Devices. Now, if you look at the situation here, market definitions and segmentation. So very quickly, what the heck is M to M? By the way, M to M means machine to machine. It is mostly industrial, but the connected car is not really industrial. Um, the connect, connected car or the smart car and also fleet management is actually the person in the car enjoying telematics and infotainment services. That's what NTM is. SIM used for industrial devices. Um, the, U, U, the U SIM, U means universal, um, SIM means subscriber identity module. That's what SIM means. U SIM is for 3G, UICC is for 4G. All right. Um, generally bought by the OEM service provider. Mobile devices. SIM used in the device. You take the SIM card from the operator, you put it in the device, you make a call. Um, mostly smartphones, but also tablets. SIM connectivity is triggered by the end user. So I put the SIM card in, I get it from the operator, and then I have 3G or 4G YWAN connectivity. IoT, the Internet of Things. SIM is used in a connected non-industrial device. Again, a connected non-industrial device. Industrial device, non-industrial device. Um, very fragmented, but some clear applications. Tablets. Apple is using eSIM in a tablet. Did you know that? You're an engineer. Did you know that? Come on. Just say no. I'm a software engineer. <laughs> Just say, I knew that. Wearables. <laughs> Who is wearing a smartwatch right now? Who has one? Is it the Apple smartwatch? Yes, sir. There's no eSIM. Ah, but they tether it wirelessly with Bluetooth from the smartphone. That's Apple's plan. Which doesn't make it really completely smart, right? That you're tethered. It's okay, Bluetooth, but not, not so secure. I'm a security specialist as well. And home appliances will have this. Next, really quick, I'm gonna go by this really quick because I talk fast, East Coast, Massachusetts. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, SIM card is facing a revolution. We're talking about a revolution right now. So it's important for the Rainmaker, which is what my role has been for, the past, for five years in China to enable near field communications and something called TEE to evangelize this technology, and I won't just be doing it here in Seattle, but it's appropriate that this is my first presentation on eSIM 2016. All right, changing the supply chain process. All right, so simple. You have a SIM card. The SIM card has a profile. That's the operator's profile. That's the operator's technology that is embedded into the SIM card, right? Then it gets provisioned, personalized, with your data for T-Mobile. And then it goes into the device. That's the traditional way a SIM card works in a smartphone. Ah, but things are changing. Things are changing. You have what's called a reprogrammable SIM. That is what an eSIM is. It's reprogrammable. Why is it important to smart cities? It's very important because that's what smart cities are going to use in smart meters. Um, all kinds of uh, reading information um, on buildings and uh, all kinds of things. All right. You have a profile. You notice it's a small little module, eight pin module. That is, uh, that's a SIM card actually, believe it or not. Um, this, is get, this gets personalized, it gets assembled into the smartphone, uh, but then your activation can be reprofiled, wow, depending on a domestic or inter international usage. 
keep that thought for a minute. All right, bringing evolution to the use cases. Come on, there are millions of use cases. How about a camera with 3G or 4G connectivity? How about a camera for a CCTV, closed circuit? Uh, basically, there are tons and tons of use cases for embedding a SIM into a device for constantly 24-7 wireless YWAN connectivity, 3G or 4G. Um, there are three phases in this market migration that are going on right now, from the removal, removable to the embedded. Okay, right now it's removable, but it's going to be embedded into the device. Samsung has a Gear S2 smartwatch. You can buy it at Best Buy, you can buy it at T-Mobile and Verizon, actually all the operators. Here's the problem. It's locked, software locked to that carrier. What happens when I go overseas? Well, you can you roam, you can roam. Well, geez, that's a little expensive. That's why all this technology is coming about, because it's expensive to roam with your smart device to another country. Think about fleet management. I have a, a, a fleet of trucks. I have to go to Canada today. I have to go to Mexico tomorrow. What happens when I leave the United States? Roaming charges for mostly very, very expensive. If you've ever roamed outside this country and you saw your bill, wow, it's like sticker shock, all right? Um, now it's going from locked to reprogrammable. So right now it's locked, but it's, it's changing to reprogrammable for the eSIM. Uh, and from phone only to all these other connected devices. So this a three-phase market migration that's going on right now. Next, I'll go through these slides real quick. And if you have real techie geeky questions, hey, I won't run away. You can ask me these questions later on. So think about this: the SIM industry, the the servicing the ecosystem has the OEM here, which provides the SIM for the device, right? Then you have the MNO. They provide the what? MNOs are not going away, okay? You can call them dumb pipe, you can call them semi-dumb pipe, you can call them smart pipe. They're gonna be here, they're the ones who provide the wireless. Without wireless, you have no IoT. Without wireless, you have no smartphones. Um, without wireless, we're back in cave, we're back in cave land. <laughs> so the MNO provides credentials and, and to activate and personalize the SIM on the device. The end user, okay, he buys the services. I buy the subscription. My subscription is set to T-Mobile. Why does it have to be set to T-Mobile on my smart, <coughs> so smart device, which I roam into China and I roam into Italy? How come it has to be through T-Mobile's roaming services? Well, T-Mobile doesn't have roaming services. Unless I make a call. Well, I'm going to make a call. Next. eSIM is a reality in the M to M world. Who owns a smart car? And I know this is on the high end, I don't know one, but I have a Toyota Prius. To me, it's semi-smart. Mm -hmm. Who has ever ridden in a smart car? Who has ever ridden in a car with 4G connectivity, which also gives you the Wi-Fi? Has anybody ridden, ridden in, oh, say so you've, you've ridden in a 4G car. Uh, well, I think the new Tesla. Bingo. 4G. Bingo, there you go. It's, don't worry if you don't, if you haven't ridden in a Tesla, I haven't either. <laughs> it is going and migrating down to Ford, GM, Toyota. Everybody's putting, 4G connectivity in the hub, embedded, soldered into the hub. Of how, the how long? What's the time frame? It's happening now. No, what, what's the realist time frame? So it's happening. Well, it's, so. it's on BMWs, yep. Mercedes Benz, yep. and Audi. So all the premium European cars for the most part. Yes. And Tesla. And Tesla. And US, what, you like. Everyone. I've talked about US to German, them. right? So what's that time frame? Well, Lower end. GM and Ford, 2016. Yeah. GM and Ford. Yep. Putting it in right now. I, I uh, was on a panel session in Shanghai last year with Ford. Yep. They're doing it. So MTM modules provide security. MTM devices uh, basically, well, you can call the smart car an MTM device. An MTM device provides you a modem for the 3G or 4G wireless connectivity. It also has the eSIM embedded into it. And that basic module, which is about this big, that baby gets, well, maybe not that big. That gets embedded into the smart, into the hub of the car to provide 4G connectivity to do what? Infotainment, telematics, all kinds of onboard system diagnostics, and, and because it's M2M, it talks to another car with the same technology. And 2017 DOT, Department of Transportation Federal Standard, all cars must have a kill switch, all cars must be connectable to the internet. 2017. I think maybe that's a good sign for the auto industry. 
So it's already happening, happening in the M to M space. Um, and I just want to let you know, it's also happening in smart meters. PLG Power, they're all using smart meters right now to read the gas, the water, the electric. They're not driving around to every house anymore. That's all done wireless with these M to M modules um, that are knit at your home or at the water pipe measuring things. That's what sensors do. They measure things. By the way, sensors are not, are not um, sensors generally speaking need the 3G or 4G connectivity because they're usually long distance. Sometimes you can use other wireless technologies like Z-Wave or Zigbee. I worked for Motorola promoting Zigbee, well, a decade ago, a little more than a decade ago. So there are other wireless connectivities, but they're low range. Only 3G and 4G give you miles and miles of coverage. These other technologies are a few hundred feet. Well, there are other new technologies, but generally speaking, 3G and 4G. Next. Spent a little bit too much time on that slide. All right, move forward. With the launch of Apple SIM in 2014, oh yes, Apple has launched eSIM as a removable SIM in the iPad Mini 3, iPad Mini 4, iPad uh, Air 2, and the iPad, the, the, the new iPad Pro. I haven't seen the new iPad Pro, but they say it's embedded. It's actually embedded, not removable. Mm -hmm. Hello, there you go. So Apple actually was the first company to do this. MNOs and mobile handset manufacturers. Uh, MNOs means, sorry. Mobile network operators, wireless operators. The, the term that most people use in the industry is MNO, mobile network operator. Verizon. Is, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT, AT, yes. All of the, all the uh, operators in America and all over the world, there are over 400 operators around the world. Mm -hmm. Now, they, they have lots of power in the wireless industry, but handsome manufacturers like Apple, Samsung, are gaining power with the ability to use these interesting technologies. And that's not just handsome manufacturers. Ever hear of a company called, uh, ever hear of a technology called WeChat, WhatsApp, even Skype? They have significant capability because they provide a service. Nobody's paying for it. All right, so that's what's going on with Apple. I mentioned to you about Samsung's um, smartwatch, the Gear S2 smartwatch, which is really cool. You should really take a look at it at the store next time. Next. How are you guys in San Diego doing? Can you can you see me? Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Oh, they're on mood. Okay. Because of the airplane noise. All right. Yeah, we're making our own noise here. The market migration would take three steps. So this is what's going to happen. Today we have IoT connected devices. Apple SIM, Samsung smartwatch, but it's closed loop. When you go to Best Buy and you say, hey, uh, whose operator can I use? Can I change? Oh no, you have to go with, we have to embed it. We, it's embedded and we have to uh, burn it in there so it's only one operator. That is not going to last. The standard for uh, smart and connected devices, okay, is going to um, come into fruition in July of this year by the GSMA. Uh, the company I work for, Oasis Smart Sim, is involved in a program with 40 companies. Half of them operators, half of them uh, big companies. Microsoft is involved, and so are many of the smart card manufacturers. It's called the GSMA Remote Sim Provisioning Program. What that does is it gives you, the subscriber, the capability to have different profiles domestically, internationally, and one default, we call the bootstrap profile, and you can change that profile, uh, and you can get your own different subscription packages for your device. Imagine that, you don't have to swap out a SIM card between going between China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, which is what I did for five years. I'd have to swap out the SIM card because the, the uh, roaming rate was so expensive. Imagine roaming to six different European cities and, and changing out the SIM card because the roaming charges were, were, were killing you. This technology is going to do away with that, okay? So it was clo it's closed loop right now. The, uh, the eSIM deployed according to the MTM standards, any proprietary standard, eSIM deployment needs agreement between MNOs and, M &Os and OEMs. Apple SIM is a closed loop. Right now, Apple SIM is closed loop, but Apple has joined this organization recently, February, at the Mobile World Congress. They joined this organization, and then Samsung said, okay, we'll join too. So now everybody's on board, everybody wants a standard for consumer devices using eSIM technology. Um, and by 2018, there'll be a convergence and the first hybrid embedded and removable SIM smartphone will be in the market. You know what, that might be 2017.
that might be 2017. And then, and then what we'll have is an eSIM with the IC, with the OAS, with the SIM, an open loop situation, and by, tw by 2020, you will not see a SIM card. Save it, put it into the SIM museum, okay? <laughs> Next. I'm making it very simple because we don't have time. Closed loop temporary concept, okay. Right now, my garden wall. This is my garden wall. I'm T-Mobile, I'm AT. My garden wall, not yours. You, are, you, you, have, you subscribers, you want my services? You pay this price, all right? Closed loop implementation will continue until the final standards are deployed, all right? Closed loop will, is a temporary concept since it suits none of the major stakeholders. Think about this. Right now you have New York Times top 10 book list, right? You have, remember for us older people, Billboard, maybe, remember, remember MTV, top 10 MTV, top 10 Billboard, right? You're going to see mobile network operators all over the world saying, hey, now I can advertise to all these Seattle people going to China. Use my China mobile for two weeks, low cost. When you come with your tablet, your, your Apple or your tablet or whatever smart device, use my services. You sound like a Chinese guy, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, implementation of standards shall be, shall be fast. To th this July, the standard's gonna be set. Does everybody agree with the standard? Are there little hiccups? Of course, but standards are important. You can't scale technology without standards. No matter how much pre protection, uh, protectionism and techno-nationalism goes on around the world with various countries, which will not be named for legal reasons, you cannot scale technology, especially wireless technology, because I've, I've done it. I've scaled and I've standardized technologies. You've got two minutes left, please. Two minutes, okay. So you can't scale without standards. Next. So IoT connectivity and subscription management. Embed the eSIM OS with a secure chip or port it onto the OEM hardware. So it's embedded into the device. You connect, auto-connect bootstrap. It's auto-connecting. You power on the device, it automatically connects. You activate remote SIM provisioning management through the cloud. So it's actually a service that's remotely provisioning your SIM. You don't have to worry about it. It's already in the device. It's gonna remotely provision. Ah, but you have to have the subscription for China Mobile, uh, Vodafone, AT&T. You've got to have the subscription set up. Uh, and then finally, your global connectivity. You don't have to worry anymore about switching out a SIM card, about having this global roaming uh, charge on this handset. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Next. So basically, um, your core network for the IT is in the cloud here, but it's back down onto the handset. Bootstrap is like a default. Everyone must have a default. And that default is not owned by an MNO, not owned by a mobile network operator. And then you can have the first profile and then any other profile that you want, which is embedded into the eSIM and it, and it allows for you to have all this connectivity and the ability for you or a service provider, maybe not a mobile network operator, a new type of service provider to, to manage your services as you roam. How it works is the customer, um, the, how it works is you have a subscription manager, and this is one of the partners that we work with to provide the device management. So don't worry if you're not, if you can't worry, don't worry if you don't know how to manage these subscriptions. There's a comp, there are companies that will help you do that, and this is the company we work with, Spirit. Next. Wow. One more, I think this is it. One last slide. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is, these are the, these are all the companies that are involved in eSIM technology. Uh, you can see lots of very famous companies, and we're one of them. Next. I know I'm at the end here. I think I'm at the end. Okay, so there are two videos, so we don't have to see the videos now. Um, I know that this is a new concept, but I guarantee you, I've been promoting cutting edge technologies because I'm the guy who takes the technology to the global supply chain where the manufacturing takes place. That's usually China. So, uh, well, uh, welcome to the first presentation on eSIM that I think has ever really been given in the United States because it doesn't come from the United States. Thank you very much. So, Carl, this is Darren. Oh, yes, Q&A. I have a question. Um, so, is it...